If you are looking around for your first reliable dash cam, then the FineView GX33 may be the right one for you. As an entry-level dash cam, it boasts the basic essentials that are a must. Plus, it comes with some extra features that you will find useful. Some notable features this dual-channel setup comes equipped with are Full HD recordings at 30 frames per second for both the front and rear cameras, Parking mode recording so you don't miss a thing when your vehicle is parked, buffered recording so you get footage recorded before and after an impact or motion event, battery discharge protection to ensure you can still start your vehicle when you need it, AI damage detection to notify you of impact events when you get back to your vehicle, and more. Does the FineView GX33 execute on all it promises? Find out next. Fracking Creations, showing you the good stuff. Before we get started, just a full disclosure. This is not a paid or sponsored review. However, Blackbox My Car was kind enough to send me this FineView GX33 to review. I do get to keep the dash cam after testing, but I am not otherwise paid or compensated for my work on this video and was told to provide an honest review. If you are looking for a dash cam, I will provide our affiliate links below to the GX33, other dash cam options, and additional installation accessories you can get with a discount. Image quality. The main purpose of any dash cam is to capture an event, whether it's an accident or someone damaging your vehicle. It goes without saying that you want to have all the footage captured in enough detail so that it is useful. That's why I feel when balancing out costs with features, the minimum standard should be full HD of 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames per second for both the front and rear cameras. Note that the GX33 captures video files with a bitrate of 16 megabits per second. While 2K or 4K dash cams are where you want to be if you want to capture more details like license plate numbers and such, I find that the output of this entry level dash cam is okay. Like other full HD dash cams, just don't expect it to be able to capture the license plate number when more than a car length out in ideal lighting conditions. When comparing footage from the DJI Osmo Pocket that is mounted about a foot behind the GX33, the DJI Pocket does a better job than the GX33. Both shot at Full HD resolution at 30 frames per second. Of course, this isn't a fair comparison since the DJI Pocket is over twice the cost of the GX33, it's gimbal stabilized and has a native 4K sensor and outputs the videos at 35 megabits per second. But you get an idea of the limits of the HD resolution for the GX33. The GX33 has a 2.1 megapixel Sony Exmor R Starvis image sensor which is a great performer for night footage and is a sensor a lot of other good dash cams are using too. On top of that, the front camera uses HDR to enhance the contrast of the video and auto night vision to balance out the brightness in dark or bright settings. Reliability. Intelligence impact detection recorded. One, starting video recording. The next thing a dash cam should be is reliable. It's no good if your dash cam can capture great footage but wasn't recording when you needed it to be. During my time using the FineView GX33, it has been very stable and reliable. It boots up fairly quickly in a few seconds, and the GPS receiver can obtain a signal fairly quickly while out in the open. I've tested it in standard driving mode, smart time-lapse mode, motion parking mode, and also power saving mode, and all worked well. I will go into more detail for each one later in this video, so look for those to come. Aside from the dash cam being reliable, you also want to pair it with a reliable and high quality memory card. FineView has done just that by pairing the GX33 with one of Samsung's top micro SD cards that comes included with the dash cam. That's right, it's included in the box so you don't need to add that to your cart when you buy your dash cam. The Samsung Pro Endurance card is a really good card that is designed for the endurance required by dash cams, body cams, security cameras, and more. It also has an operating temperature range of minus 25 degrees Celsius to 85 degrees Celsius, which will be necessary for the hot operating conditions of dash cams and also for winter use. The GX33 is working well with the included memory card and so far, no issues from daily use or from formatting the card a few times. On another note, all the settings seem to be stored on the dash cam itself, so when I changed micro SD cards, I didn't have to reconfigure the dash cam settings to my preferences. Nowadays, with climate change, you may encounter scenarios where it gets very hot in your car after it is parked out in the sun for some time. And if you live in cold climate zones, you may experience the other end of the spectrum where it is very cold. It's good to see that as an entry-level dash cam, the GX33 has one of the highest operating temperature ranges of minus 20 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. This is as high as some of the top-end dash cams and even best some of them. Recordings. In standard driving or normal mode, 
The GX33 continuously records video files in one minute intervals. You can see these clips of your trip by filtering for normal mode recordings, then playing them back in the phone app or the Find View player on a computer. When in driving mode or when in parking mode, if an impact occurs, an event or parking event recording is saved of the incident. Event recordings are tagged and stored separately so that you can easily filter for it quickly without having to search through many recordings. This can save you time when, for example, you have to find footage of something that happened while you parked your vehicle somewhere over several hours. Instead of reviewing hours of video from start to end, you just need to filter for this specific event. Additionally, the event summary page can also help you to quickly find the footage of events that have happened. This groups several footage together into one collection of events based on when it happened, per driving or parking period. The GX33's event recordings also use a cool feature called buffered recording. This means that for impact events, motion events, or when manually pressing the record button, a 20 second video will be recorded that includes about 10 seconds before and 10 seconds after the event. This is helpful in allowing you to see the situation leading up to and after the event. For impact events, in this case hitting a harder bump in the road, you can see that about 10 seconds of footage is recorded before the detected impact and about 10 seconds after. In park mode, you can have impact detection and motion detection. I will review these in the park mode section of this video. Note that to quickly find the important scene of a specific event, just skip roughly to the halfway point to see the actual event happen. If that's not what you are looking for, just move on to the next video. No need to watch the whole thing. During my testing of the dash cam, I've reviewed a lot of footage of the events detected by the GX33, and all have been recorded well and seamlessly. My experience so far is that the GX33 does a good job capturing event recordings. This is definitely something that you want a dash cam to be good at. The GX33 also has an AI damage detection feature to help you identify damage to your vehicle, which I will go over later in this video, so look for that section too. When you first set up the dash cam, Make sure to decide how you want your memory card to be divided up. Depending on how much footage you expect for driving, events, and parking, you can configure this based on your needs. This allows you to have enough space for the different types of footage the dash cam captures. It's good that this feature is available so that users can customize to their specific usage since not everyone uses their vehicles the same. Just note that changing the setting requires you to reformat the card, so back up any footage you want to keep first. Let's go into the different recording modes of the GX33 next. Driving mode, standard. In driving mode, you have several modes to pick from. In standard mode, continuous one minute recordings are captured. If an event is detected, it saves the current file and also stores a separate event recording so that it specifically captures the 10 seconds before and after the event in one 20 second long video. Since this is tagged as an event recording, it will be easy for you to find and download if needed. Just make sure to tune your event sensitivity accordingly to avoid too many false detections or too little. One issue I had when I initially tested the dash cam was that I was getting a lot of false impact events. Impact events were happening almost every few minutes even while the sensitivity was set to low and I wasn't hitting any significant bumps on the road. I did report this to Blackbox my car and they in turn notified FindView. I was told that an upcoming firmware update should fix this sensitivity issue. Since then, I have realized that not installing the dash cam on the windshield and installing it on interior trim can cause excessive events to trigger. This was due to the trim not being firmly secured to the windshield, which also caused the initial videos captured to be a bit jittery. I have repositioned the dash cam and the false detections are much less frequent now, but I do get the occasional one here and there. One more thing to note is that my car does have sportier suspension than most vehicles, so this may not be as common for most people. Other than that, the standard driving mode works well to capture the drive seamlessly. Driving mode, smart time-lapse. Smart time-lapse can be used to allow you to save more footage. This can be useful if you are driving for long periods of time where the old footage will get overwritten to make room for new footage. As per FindView, the 32GB card can record about 236 minutes of standard recording, and using this mode can increase that about 5 times. Just note that in this mode, there will be no audio, but in the case of an impact event, it will still perform the normal buffered recordings at full HD and 30 frames per second. In driving mode, the time-lapse setting still captures one minute long videos, but the actual time elapsed is five minutes. This is where you get the five times increase. Driving mode, 15 FPS. 
For this setting, it's pretty self-explanatory. Full HD at 15 frames per second. Park mode, motion. I think every good dash cam should have park mode. The GX33 can capture motion events and also impact events while the car is turned off and parked. Though you only have the front and rear view, at least you get some footage you can use to try to figure out what happened in case of an incident. Unlike normal driving mode, park mode does not record continuous one minute interval videos. For motion parking mode, it only stores a video when motion is detected in either camera or when an impact is detected. Again, this is buffered recording, so you will get 10 seconds before and 10 seconds after the detected event. In some cases, when events occur close to each other, you will have videos with overlapping footage because each video is triggered by separate events. So when you play back in sequence, it looks like it recorded more than it should, but that's the way it's supposed to work. Each event is packaged into its own video file with 10 seconds of footage before and after the event. Park mode, smart time-lapse. For those that want to store more footage on the card, then using the smart time-lapse parking mode can be useful. There's no audio, but impact events will be recorded in standard mode of 30 frames per second with audio. Park mode, power saving. If you only need footage of impact events, then the power saving mode could be for you. But there is a catch. In this mode, the dash cam will go to low power mode where only the impact sensors are awake. The dash cam will still wake to record videos if an impact is detected. The catch is that the video is not buffered. This means that the scenario leading up to the impact will not be recorded. The recording will start after the impact occurs. You do, however, get the added benefit of low power usage. FindView claims that the GX33 will go from 4.1 watts of power usage down to about 0.15 watts in this mode, so it should allow your car battery to last a lot longer to power the dash cam for long-term park mode operation. Note that you can also adjust your sensitivity levels for impact and motion to your needs. From my testing, even with the event sensitivity setting set to high, I don't think all incidents will be detected since some impacts may just be too soft and not trigger an impact recording. But this is something that I believe all dash cams with this feature will suffer from. Park mode, battery protection. The good thing about dash cams with park mode nowadays is that they can detect the voltage of your car battery to determine when to power off to protect your battery from full discharge. This ensures that you are still able to start your vehicle when needed while using park mode to monitor your vehicle. It used to be that you would need an external device like the PowerMagic Pro to monitor the battery and cut power when appropriate, but not with this dash cam. It's built in. The GX33 comes with many battery voltage options, including for hybrid vehicles and also for external battery packs like this PowerCell 8 offered by Blackbox My Car. If needed, you can also set a cutoff time where after the set number of hours has passed, the dash cam will power down. For my particular car, I park in underground parking where there are a lot of people coming and going and the GX33 was able to keep recording for about two days while parked most of the time. Though note that my car has a larger battery since it has start-stop features, so this may not be typical of your vehicle. Also, many factors can affect how long the dash cam can run in park mode. These include the age and condition of your vehicle's battery, what park mode you use, how many motion and impact events are triggered while parked, and others. Look into the auxiliary battery if you are concerned with longevity of park mode for your dash cam. I'll include links to this battery in the video description below. App, Software, Firmware I have had a chance to use both the Android FindView app and the Windows FindView player, and they are both quite straightforward and easy to use. They aren't cluttered and bogged down with too many options to have to fiddle around with while giving you enough control of the dash cam. It's a good balance. The Android app allows you to configure the dash cam settings, update it, view the live view, videos, and events. I do feel the app could be a little faster in transitioning between screens, but I'm not sure if this is a Wi-Fi interference issue on my end or not since where I'm using this, there are a lot of Wi-Fi access points around. I also had some issues with getting the updates applied, as it seemed to hang and other times seemed to have connectivity issues with the app. I think I narrowed it down to it partially being an Android problem though. I suggest that when you first connect to the dash cam on Wi-Fi, you wait for this Android notification. Expand it and select to have Android stay connected, even though the connection does not have internet. This seems to have solved my connectivity issues. I noticed that during playback in the Android app, the audio volume would pulse in and out like this.
It's not present when I played back in the Windows player, so I think it's something in the Android app player. Another thing I would complain about is that the Android video player does not allow you to scroll through the video or use the skip forward and back buttons. It would be useful and I did use the scroll bar a lot when reviewing footage on the Windows player. These are things that Finding View could easily fix in a future update though. Other than that, the player works and you can also download your videos and view the AI impact detection info. On the Windows side, the player is easier and faster to use to review footage, partly because it is directly accessing the video file instead of going through Wi-Fi. I did, however, encounter an issue with it accessing the GPS map. I narrowed it down to my user account being a non-administrator account. Most users won't run into this issue, but if you have the same setup, you might. Note that for a non-administrator user account, even launching the app as an administrator did not work to fix this issue. The only way I can access the GPS map is to log in using an administrator account to run the app. I have tested this using the latest Windows FindView player that's available at the time, which is version 5.2.3. I hope FindView can fix this in a future release. There were a few other minor issues that I noted, and FindView is looking to get them fixed in upcoming updates. This is also something that is important when buying a dash cam. You want the manufacturer to continue to support it and update it for any bugs and maybe even add a few more useful functionalities. It's good to see that FindView is going to provide updates and only time will tell if they will do so quickly and consistently. ADAS. This entry level dash cam also comes equipped with an advanced driver assistance system. It's not something that is necessary for a dash cam, but at the price point, I don't mind. However, there are four features included. The speed camera notification system is the one I found the most useful. This is the one feature from this system that I actually like and will keep enabled. You get notified of seven types of cameras. Mobile speed camera zone. So this can be useful, especially when you go anywhere you are not familiar with. I've never had a system like this before and to be included in an entry level dash cam like this is a nice add-on. Just note that they may not have all locations tagged in the database and new speed traps can always just pop up that aren't in the Speedcams database. The good thing is that the database is apparently updated every quarter, and you just need to update it in the dash cam. If you need to know the region supported, just check on the Find View website or in the app when you select the region. The current ones are shown here. AI Damage Detection The GX33 also has an AI Damage Detection feature that's supposed to let you know where it detects an impact to your vehicle. Using machine learning and data from experiments, the system is supposed to be able to inform you where the damage was done to your vehicle when parked. It is subdivided into eight zones and three levels of impact. I performed some small tests to see how well this system will work. Note that I have the impact sensitivity of the parking mode set to high. I found that for small impacts, the AI system may not be able to detect where something happened, but it may be enough to at least record a parking impact event. When it does detect an AI event, the next time you start up or power up to accessory mode in your vehicle, the dash cam will notify you. Intelligence impact detection recorded. One, starting video recording. The associated video will also be tagged as an AI damage event. Plus, it is supposed to bring up an event summary similar to this when you connect to the dash cam. Sometimes it didn't come up for me, and if it doesn't for you, or if you accidentally close the screen, then just find the associated event and video and play it. Then you can access the impact screen from the menu of the video. Since I am not actually damaging the vehicle to test this feature, my simulated impacts are not indicative of how well it works. So sometimes it does get the area wrong, but at least an event is logged and the video is recorded. Though this feature isn't perfect, I think it is good that you get informed of potential damage to your vehicle. Without this, sometimes you get back to your vehicle only to drive home and find out about damage to your vehicle sometime later. So getting this notification while still at the parking lot can get you to do a quick check to see what, if anything, happened. Smart SD Lock If you've ever killed a USB drive by not properly unmounting it from your computer, then you know why this is important. Damaging the USB drive this way makes the whole drive useless. This also applies to micro SD cards. It should not be removed before the dash cam is properly turned off. Though there is a way to get around the lock mechanism, I think you have to purposely want to do this. When used as designed, it just takes about a few seconds for the shutdown process to complete. The package. 
The GX33 comes with almost all you need to get going out of the box. The front camera, the rear camera, the hardwire power cable, the rear camera cable, the micro SD card with adapter, the GPS module, mounting accessories, manuals. Note that not all dash cams come with a high-end micro SD card, a GPS module, and a hardwire cable. But the GX33 does, so you don't need to add these to the cart when you are buying. So consider that when you are comparing dash cams to buy. The included manual is actually pretty good at giving a quick rundown of all the main features and what the buttons and lights mean on the dash cam, so I won't go over that. Earlier, I said that the kit gives you almost all you need to get started, and that's because you will still need to get a fuse tap kit to be able to install the dash cam and start using it. I would like to complain that the dash cam doesn't include a cigarette lighter power cable, which will allow you to start using the dash cam right away, but just using the cigarette lighter power cable alone does not allow parking mode to work. When you buy a dash cam with good features like parking mode, you really should take advantage of all its useful features by installing it properly using the hardwire power cable. If you do decide to get this dash cam, make sure to add a fuse tap kit and a circuit tester if you don't have them or a multimeter available. These are also not included. It's not too hard to install, but will take some time and learning. If you need some resources on how to install the hardwire power cable or where to get the fuse tap kit and other accessories, check our video description where I will include the links. As you can see from my review of the FineView GX33, it is quite a complete package of a quality entry-level dash cam. I'm quite impressed by what you get in the package for the price. The complete feature set, configurability, and reliability fall in line with easy-to-use, solid performer that outputs decent quality videos for a two-channel full HD dash cam. Of course, you could choose to use a DJI Osmo Pocket or your smartphone as a dash cam, but they are not meant to be used as dash cams and are much more expensive. Note too that the heat from the use under the sun will degrade your battery capacity and lifespan in these devices, not to mention the longevity and safety issues when this causes the battery to bulge. Consider getting a dedicated dash cam like the FineView GX33 instead. It offers some very good features that you would find in higher end dash cams but packages it all at a lower price point. The minor issues I encountered can easily be fixed with a firmware or app update, so I hope to see FineView follow through on this. If you enjoyed our video and want to get the GX33 for yourself or as a gift for someone, use our links in the video description and get a discount too. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel and share and like this video.